The first thing you should know about my friend Mrs. Philholm is that she's obsessed with motherhood, so obsessed that she wrote a book about it. She spent years researching the topic, studying the mothers around her, looking for similarities among the parents who raised their children well, and the red flags among the ones who didn't quite measure up. For the last 20-some years, Mrs. Philholm's defining feature is that she's been the proud mother of two wonderful boys. The next thing you should know about Mrs. Philholm is that she really is obsessed with motherhood. The things I just mentioned are totally normal and common to a lot of mothers, except perhaps authoring a book. However, Mrs. Philholm takes motherhood to a whole new level of kookiness when she scours the neighborhood for twigs, sticks, and other garbage to build human-sized nests in her backyard, like a mother bird creating a home for her young. Okay, I don't build the nests with garbage, ever. Oh, I don't know. It's all garbage. It's on the it's ground. Garbage. garbage is on the ground. The first thing you should know about my friend Andrew, and you probably already do, is that he rides a fancy motorcycle. The next thing you should know about Andrew is that today he drove that motorcycle through my brand new garage door, parked, and walked directly into the podcasting studio. When he arrived in a black helmet with a mirrored visor and black jacket, it was hard to tell the difference between the rumble of his arrival and the rumble of my neighborhood. But he came in through the alley, slid into the garage, and we closed the door for safety. Whatever must the neighbors think? Welcome to Half My Age, a weekly show in which a 25-year-old adult and a 50-year-old child help each other make sense of the world. Boy, you sound good and loud in my headphones. Yeah, yeah, I sound good and loud in my headphones too, which Did is you... nice compared to the last time yeah. we spoke when I, I couldn't get my voice in my headphones. And yeah, I at was all. Did you get them fixed? Uh, I didn't get them fixed. There was nothing wrong with them. Mm. For whatever reason, you can't control the volume on a MIDI device. So I've got to set the volume in your headphones on your microphone, and then I've got to do the same for mine before I put these two things into the, the software device. Anyway, super complicated, but yeah, it was but my fault. Yeah, that's a pretty good tip that I'm going to put in my little brain to remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's only an issue if you're using more than one microphone, which we are. But... Now it's solved, and we're coming through loud and clear, five by five. And you owe an apology. That's right, to the Blue Corporation. Blue Corporation, I'm very sorry for accusing you of making substandard products. I know. Nothing wrong with the microphone. ID10T. Error. (laughs) Where's your microphone? Is it on the table? It's on the table, yep. Oh, interesting. I'm in the stand today. Yep, you're in the stand. Okay, nobody does care about that at all. Um, But yeah, our deepest apologies to the Blue Corporation. We love your... Microphones, and by the way, I recorded a voice job with this microphone right here in the studio today, and our engineer, Jonah, told me personally on the telephone that he likes the quality of our sound enough that it our podcast is um, pride of place in his portfolio. Because, is it really? Yeah, he said that to me. That's amazing. He likes using our goofy shenanigans because the sound is so high quality, so serious shout out to the Blue Yeti. Uh, Big week this week. The keyboard issue that Mrs. Philholm and I have been complaining about, not since episode one, but close to, uh, was written about in the Wall Street Journal this last week. And We're getting off to a slow start in terms of what our viewers seem to enjoy. We're talking about our computers again. Do you want to do a fresh start? Nope, I, no, I'm, nope, I need to hear this, and everyone needs to hear it. Just bear with <laughs> us. Go on. I'm sorry to interrupt you. And it's, if you read this article online on the Wall Street Journal website, you actually have the opportunity to read the article without E's and without R's, or if you prefer, with double E's and double R's. Wait, really? Yeah, really. I, you, should, you should go check it out. There will be a link in the show notes. Um, I didn't do that. That's so funny. But that's that's exactly oh, the problem I, that I'm I having is oh, uh, I, right right in that vicinity of the keyboard. The, I'm getting doubles out of those letters. So since then, <laughs> since the article came out, other news outlets have picked it up. The Apple Corporation has responded and they said we're sorry, uh, but we we still contend that most MacBook Pro users are happy with their keyboard, which I think is a lie. I think they just 100% haven't heard from them yet. of MacBook Pro users in this room are not happy. That's right. Okay, carry on. But it's it's nice to be heard, and it's also nice, um, you know, this this issue has been written about in lesser publications, yeah. and now that the Wall Street Journal's picked it up, it's it's kind of forced Apple to respond, which has been, uh, although there's no 
actionable change that I know of yet, uh, it's nice to have them acknowledge our, our plight. Something we haven't checked in in a while that you've put here in the show notes. Uh, Mint, how's your budget? I just got an email this afternoon from Mint saying, I believe the word was bravo. Oh, yeah? My credit score has gone up. Well done, Mrs. Phil Holm. Thank you. I oh, don't oh. even know what that means. Probably means you added a mortgage to your uh, your credit report. That seems like it should make it the opposite of better. <laughs> I just, oh my gosh. So, Mint's fine. I still don't like it. But I also know that in the next very few days, one of the things I have to do is get real because I have my first mortgage payment coming up. And I think we might have talked about it, but even if we did, it's worth another shot at it. The jackals who send you fake mortgage mail. Oh, yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. And true. When I, when I started a business, um, you start getting all these semi-official looking letters from pseudo-government agencies that aren't really government agencies that say, you know, you need to buy this particular OSHA sign from this particular group with some fake made-up name. Mm. It's disgusting. And I got the same stuff when I bought a house. I mean, all the ones that say, like, they look so official and we're from your mortgage company, but we've been bought out and now you have to do this. I, I am so actually, I mean, for a minute I was freaked out about it. I understand what to do about it. What do you do about it? I Ignore personally it? have been told by one friend who looked me dead in the eye and said, there is one piece of U.S. mail that you ever need to be concerned about in terms of your mortgage, and that is your paperwork from the city about your taxes every year. Mm -hmm. And then I am going to call my mortgage guy tomorrow and say, please tell me exactly what I... Remind me again. I know I have this paperwork, but then I was also told don't use the... Uh, the I'm going to be told exactly what to do by my mortgage guy because I need a handhold right now. And then I should think I'm going to be able to do this all online and probably automatic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm sure you, your mortgage company wants you to set up auto pay so I that uh, wait. you don't miss any payments. And you should uh, you should want to do the same thing. I surely do. So this right now feels like a little bit overwhelming. Like I just got my first water bill. <laughs> was right? that overwhelming? No, I haven't opened it yet. I'm just saying, like, put it in the pile. I'm going to pay bills tomorrow, Saturday. And in a few days, it's the first of the month. And then we'll see if there's any money left. Mid will <laughs> tell me. I haven't gone in and looked at, like, the categories of how I spend my money because I don't really care. You don't really care? No. So I think when we when we first started talking about budget, you had a lot of concern. Uh, most of it stemming from the unknown. You had no idea what was going on. Do you have a better a better handle on what's going on? I do, and I do look at my bank accounts, and it doesn't freak me out as much. And I'm usually kind of pleased when I look at them. There's usually more money in there than I would expect. That's a good thing. I know. I, I, I don't know how many of our listeners feel the same way, but I bet you you're in the minority on that oh, one. Oh, it, it'll change any second. The other thing is that I have in my own little machinations, and I spend a lot of time writing in notebooks and stuff, which we've talked about, figuring it out. I have a chunk of money that I didn't put into a down payment to make this house, you know, to do the big things like furnace and garage door and the big things. And that money is dwindling. Yeah, you've done furnace and garage door. <sighs> furnace, garage door, wiring for the kiln. I've got 240 out there. Kiln guy, you know, kiln repair. Um, security system guy came that didn't cost. Well, security system goes into the budget, but whatever. So point is that, um, I'm still in the mode of that. Like, I know what I'm spending my money on, mostly. Spending money on a lot of, and Mint does keep alarm. Wow, you just dropped a big chunk of change. Did you mean to spend that much money? Yep, that's the garage door check. Yep. So, a new fence. We've had the fence moved. My boys, you talked about me being a mother, my beautiful boys, moved my fence line in so that you could, as I mentioned, park in my garage today. I uh, I can't tell you. One, one of the great joys of being a motorcycle rider, some people will disagree on this, but is being able to wear a helmet and be totally anonymous. And I don't remember if it was something from a movie or whatever. It's kind of like it's kind of like Batman, you know, turning off some rural road onto a secret thing, and then he gets to, you know, he goes right into the Batcave. Sure. Nobody has any idea that's where the feels superhero lives. Very much like that. It feels exactly like that, where you know, I'm all I'm all layered up in my jacket, and my helmet. People have no idea who I am, and I just pull right into the garage and shut the door behind me. It's uh, 
It's nice. It's a lot nicer than parking on the street and worrying if I someone's going to sideswipe my uh, my bike. That's why I did it. First of all, did you hear my cold open? It was literally about that. Um, but that was why I did that because today I'm parked out in the front and that's kind of good in the daytime so that I look like I'm home. Mm-hmm. But then I will go and replace you in the garage. But that's pretty sweet to be able to offer that. A garage door for my friends. And yeah, what <laughs> must the neighbors think? Nothing. They've got no idea anything goes on. The whole process is so smooth, they don't even know anything happened. That's true. And seriously, you the said rumble. in your cold open that yeah. the rumble is the same as the rest of the neighborhood's rumble. Did, you mentioned having a segment on the show. A segment on a the show. A new segment. Oh, yes. Uh, and I think we should slide right into that because I was just about to say I want to tell you the sounds of the hood. You want so, to tell me the ahead. sounds of the hood. And I think we should call this this feature Today I Saw in the Neighborhood. Anyways, on my way here today, I saw, um, just as I pulled off the main street, a car with <laughs> what what looked kind of like a temp tag, but it was clearly a do-it-yourself printed home temp tag <laughs> because it was the wrong size and shape of piece of paper. Was it about an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper? No, it was like a four by six. <laughs> I see. It was like someone took a picture of another temp tag and then cut it out. And, and glued it on. And they, they'd also put some kind of reflective tape. They taped it to their car with packing tape. I was going to ask about the adhesive method. They taped packing. it to their car with packing tape so that it was a little bit reflective and you couldn't quite see it. But it was clearly a, uh, a situation where this temp tag was not issued by, a, by someone who issues a lot of temp tags. By an official <laughs> of any kind. Well, today in my neighborhood, on my way here, I saw... A hawk, an actual hawk, Mm -hmm. or a falcon, I don't know, a bird of prey, a glorious, healthy bird of prey on a block away street. On block away street? A street about a block away. I was about to say the name of a street, and that is not a good idea. Uh, And it was standing in a sort of yard on a pretty busy street, and then it took off flying, and in its talons, it had... Another bird, and the feathers went flying. Oh, that's amazing. That's really great. And I saw another one of those same birds the in a, a of tree, life. The, my front yard tree, land up there. Mm-hmm. I live in a nature preserve, Andrew. You do live in a nature preserve. You want to know what I hear every night? Caca, caca. No, what's that? It's a bird. What kind of, prey? of bird? Of prey. Do you know <laughs> they yell? Hmm. They make like a, a loud screeching noise. Mm-hmm. Oh, I asked my bird. Boys, because we were listening every night at sunset at dusk, and I really think it's an owl. I hear this hooting sound, and it's really pretty. And I think it's an owl, and it is. It's sunset, so I think it's. I think it's an owl. So I was asking my boys to listen. Oh, do you hear that? And then I said, we heard another thing, and I said, oh, I've been meaning to ask you, what do you think that is? It's like this low rumble, and I hear it inside my house. Is it like a jet going by? Is it a motorcycle? What is it? And they looked at me and said, Mom. It's the sound of the hood. It's a sub. <laughs> it's the sub. <laughs> it's someone blasting their music as they drive by? Yes, sir. <laughs> I have an idea. What's your idea? I have two mugs with our logo on them. Mm-hmm. As you know, I got some swag. Just a tiny little bit of swag. I didn't I didn't get a warehouse full of swag. I got some like thoughtful gifts for you and your girlfriend and your mom. Mm-hmm. Our big I still haven't fans. given my, my mother her gift yet. Well, she should know it's coming, Andrew. I'm very <laughs> thoughtful. Gift. Gift giving is my love language and my weakness. So well, anyway. Put a pin in that because I took the test this week. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't want to put a pin. Okay. Anyway, I have, to, we have, I have two mugs with our logo and they're kind of cool, right? Do you agree? It's a pretty good mug to drink coffee out of. They are cool. And as far mug. as I know, you've got one of these. I've got one of these. Uh, and there's two more in the world. And there's two more in the world. So somebody, mm-hmm. somebody, you're going to make someone a part of a very exclusive club. Mm-hmm. I think that we should give away two Half My Age podcast mugs. You have to ship them. Are we clear on that? I'd be happy to ship awesome. a mug. Andrew's happy to ship it. Probably cost as much to ship it as I paid for the mug. So we're even <laughs> Steven on that. Um, what should the criteria be? To whom shall we send these mugs? I think we should. I think we should send one of these mugs to the person who sends us the most profound question, okay. or the two people who send the most profound questions yeah. in the next week. Most profound. Yes. 
Could you please define profound for our viewers at home? Because nope, I'm not going to define it. Oh, I'm going I'm to. Uh, they've listened. They, they, the person who wins this yeah. will have a decent idea of who <laughs> who you and I are, and what we consider profound. And what we consider profound. It's like an apples Could, to apples question. The bar is very low. Yeah, I, <laughs> really, it's pretty. We, low. we definitely um, we have our our niche subjects that we prefer over others. You know, we like mm-hmm. we like lowbrow humor. <laughs> Uh, we like Not that low brow. <laughs> we yeah. I would also like to submit that we could also send our two mugs in the universe to our first two sponsors. But that seems like I'd be sitting on those mugs for a while. <laughs> I need to get them out of my house. Too much stuff in the dollhouse. Um, but if we get some sponsors in the near future, I promise you, I will order bespoke mugs for those sponsors. Just to be clear. That'd and probably fantastic. a tote bag, because those tote bags are pretty sweet, too. Those are handy. They're super handy, especially when you've got a lot of podcast gear to lug to the dollhouse on Shakedown Street. Do you carry your podcast? You do not carry it in the Half My H tote bag. I don't. I and use that'd a backpack. be so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, oh, put a pin in what? The Love Languages Test. Okay, this week well, I took it. Why'd you take it? I took it because it came up in my relationship. Mm. <laughs> Good for you. And... I guess rather than tell you my results, I think I'll tell you what the what the categories are, and you can guess the order of my... Okay. Is this how you receive or give love? This is how I receive love. We've already talked about it, Andrew. The whole freaking audience knows the answer to this question. Yeah, but that was before I took the test. No, you... Mm. I mean, I said I took it in high school, but that was years ago. That was, I see At this point, saying. that's 10 years ago. Results. Inter- okay, I have follow-up on that. Let me put a pin in that. Go ahead. Are you paying attention? Born ready. But are you paying attention? It's 100%. Okay. I'm so for you. That's in no great. particular order, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the categories are receiving gifts, physical touch, quality time, words of affirmation, and acts of service. Mm-hmm. So this test that we're talking about is essentially, you know, di- different people experience love in different ways. And what works for one person may not work for another. Uh, maybe maybe one person really likes to receive gifts, but another person just needs to hear that they're they're loved and appreciated. So... There are these five categories, like I just said, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, and acts of service. Um, And you get a, when you take this test, you get a value for each of these five categories between zero and 12. Mm -hmm. So I've got, uh, let's see, I've got scores ranging from 10 to 3, and I'd like to hear the order you think. Let's lay the five out one more time. One more time. Physical touch. Receiving gifts, mm-hmm. quality time, mm-hmm. words of affirmation, mm-hmm. and acts of service. And you are talking, Andrew. Okay. It's adorable, as always, that you don't remember that we've already discussed this and it's been in our show notes. But that was actually a great explanation for people who are tuning in for the first time and also because we didn't give such a good ex- uh, explanation before. So you are saying that right now. Right now, as of two days ago. Mm-hmm. I have a fresh set of results. All right, I have a couple of questions. And keep in mind, I think these can change as different things in your life change. Yep, that's one of my questions. Did your results change from what you remembered in high school? I don't remember. Yeah, the whole audience knows because you put it on record. So why would you think they'd changed? Did your results surprise you? Maybe. I, I think I was a little bit surprised. Um, this is how I won't you, say why yet. Mm. This is how you receive love? This is how I receive love. And you want me to guess the points of I want you to guess the order. Order. Number five. Number five. The one that I'm least... Yes. Touch. Yes, that's correct. We literally know this. Please stay away from me. Yep. Number one. Quality time. No. Words of affirmation. Nope. Okay, it's acts of service. Yep. Number one is acts of service. literally what it was when you were in high school. Number one is acts of service. <clears throat> I don't Number think you've changed. five is physical touch. Yep. And the ones in between. Are you ready for them? Yeah. I've got a two-way tie uh, for number two and number three. It's quality time and words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those are, if anyone cares, those are sixes. Mm. So I feel... Uh, I've got your six, Andrew. Always. <laughs> those are... About halfway. I mean, I don't know what it means, zero out of 12. I know. Uh, in terms of quality time. I, I probably feel just as much love in it as I feel 
<laughs> not love. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, that's true. You don't want to help people ever. This is literally this, your same list from high school. I thought because it that- changed, I'm pretty darn sure that that's exactly what you said. Your way you give love is quality time. I hope so. No, excuse me. Acts of service is how you give love. Yeah, I, I definitely. I think. I think in my case in particular, I feel love and I show love uh, with acts of service. So that is. I don't believe that has changed since high school. But anyway, so I was. I was gaming that because I thought it had changed. But what I did is I picked your number twos. So yeah, I get it. And my number one was words of affirmation. My number five was also touch. Do you remember? So my my number one is a 10 out of 12. Do you remember what your number one was? Was it a 12 out of 12? I'm going to tell you right now some funny things about those numbers. I don't remember mine. None of mine were so significant. I don't think there was a huge difference in any of them, to tell you the truth. Really? Yep. I think I was like not uh, uh, super on the scale, but that's how it, shake, sh- the, the, how it shook, shook out. Um, we discussed on this program that quite likely I did not take the test for how I give love. This is how I received it and experience it but quite likely my how i show love is gifts Mm -hmm. that's a weakness we've talked about it at great length blah 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 my not a weakness well we've talked about it's at to our own detriment these people it it could be a uh to your financial detriment (laughs) if you overspend on gifts yeah okay so Tal took the love languages test inspired by listening to our podcast shout out to all our listeners and um like we just said, timing in life, he scored a zero on gift giving. Receiving on gifts. receiving gifts. On receiving gifts, he scored a zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's hilarious. If only you had taken the love languages oh test uh, 20 years before. And probably some of this comes out of resentment. I mean, again, me saying t- physical touch was my least. I mean, mm-hmm. p- probably that's true. And like I said, mine, the spectrum was pretty narrow. I mean, it was, you know, everything. I like all the love languages, Andrew. It's mm-hmm. not that I don't like touch, but my gosh, I was taking that at a time when I was getting my divorce and lying on the couch and going, don't touch me, don't really touch me, right? I mean, clearly it was a reflection of that. I also have a friend in the divorce class who... When she took the test, came up with a zero, a big goose egg on acts of service Mm -hmm. because she was super resentful at the time that that's how her ex had shown love. Like, I vacuumed, I did the dishes, and she's going, you never once brought me flowers. There was no romance (laughs) in love. Um, Were you surprised by any of this? Because like I said, I think it's actually identical and you haven't changed since high school. I'm surprised by that. I'm not. I'm, um... Jeez. I don't. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about this. Uh, no, you don't. So it's 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 <laughs> nice. And like you like you said so appropriately several episodes ago, every every like two weeks I get a new a new thinking new box. Brain box. It's just uh, your mind grapes just flush out. Just like Ooh. an Alzheimer's patient, I'm pleasantly surprised mm-hmm, by these mm-hmm. results. Right. <laughs> every single time I see them, they could be exactly the same, but they always interest me. Without getting too personal. Was it helpful for you to take this test in your relationship? Uh, I, I think so. I think so. I think um, in any relationship, it's important to make sure that you and your partner are on the same page. Mm-hmm. Right? And th- this is kind of inside baseball about my own relationship, but I work <laughs> an awful lot. And I, I spend a lot of time thinking about work, and I often am distant, not just with my the with Delaney, but also with the other people in my life, because I, my mind is elsewhere. I'm thinking about other problems, and that manifests manifests itself in me looking disinterested and me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so every now and then, we just got to do a quick check in and say, "Is everything okay?" Mm-hmm. Uh, and in this case, I think everything is okay. Um, what sometimes happens when people say to you, "I love you, Andrew," what sometimes do you say in response? Thank you. Uh-huh. And why is that? Because I'm not paying attention. Because I'm thinking about something else. I know. But I mean, it's it's, it's so a, good to do a check in, and I'm proud of you both because you know what else? And some of that is male female too. Um, I remember early in our marriage, just sort of being like, uh, he seems upset, and, and and I don't know why. And he's saying he's not upset, and you know, he's saying I'm not upset because he's actually thinking about, dang, that windshield wiper needs to be replaced. Right. But I'm sitting there thinking, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Are you okay? Why are you being distant? I'm not being distant. That was a that was an issue, and I think we can say that. And I mean, I do think some of that is, I don't know, doesn't necessarily, I don't mean to be gender normative, but I mean, 
uh, male, female versus, I don't know, whatever. Because I seem to have that relationship with a lot of people in my life, <laughs> mostly the men in my life, my children and my husband, where it's like, um, yeah, I'm not, mm-hmm. nothing's wrong. They're just thinking about something else. Mm-hmm. And I, th- maybe we found a main topic for the day. Um, but th- this is true, not just of romantic relationships, but all kinds of relationships. Uh, we said on the podcast, I went on a road trip recently mm-hmm. and road trips on motorcycle are double interesting because you check in with each other every hundred, maybe 200 oh, yeah, miles. Right. Uh, and the other, the time in between yeah. you're making assumptions and guesses about the way they feel and the way they're thinking and that sort of thing. And you're both uncomfortable the whole way. I mean, just sitting in the same position for for 200 miles is uncomfortable. So you get to a gas station and you're both a little on edge and and uh, cranky. And then you've you've had this thought about, you know, maybe maybe they want to stop, maybe they don't want to stop me. But what what you just all these thoughts going on and you say something and they say something and then you come away with a totally wrong idea of how they're feeling when in actuality their butt hurts and they're hungry and what they said to you was I don't know. Go away. I fucking hate you. Oh. Right. You're taking it that direction Mm -hmm. because you're traveling with your brother. Let's make that clear. Traveling with my brother. But also, I mean, this is, this is true of all relationships where um, you come up with an idea of how you think things are without checking in with the other person to see if that ideal is reality. Yeah. Right. No, that's right. Boy, Andrew, that's good. Um, In every relationship, including interactions in a store or at the post office, mm-hmm. um, somebody wise and older than I once just said, I make the mistake of assuming everybody thinks the way I think. And it wasn't, she didn't mean sort of politically. She meant like, right, that I'm hot right now mm-hmm. here standing in line. And my experience is that I'm overheating and this is so annoying. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that's the person next to me, that that's also their experience. And that person isn't just like as simple as that isn't right. hot doesn't know what i'm talking and about and you seem like the crazy person yeah. who's, who, oh my god it's hot or vice versa that's an old lady thing right there oh my god it's hot <laughs> or vice versa right i'm feeling chill and fine and i just walked into the store for the first time and i don't know that i'm walking into somebody somebody's day they just got yelled at their boss mhm yeah. right <laughs> i mean that idea of oh god we're so deep and philosophical though andrew but i mean really that idea that the human experience even the person next to me in an airplane in that tight a space where you would think we are having the same experience and in, i mean in some physical ways we are but right is completely different the, the airplane's a fantastic yeah, example really because when is. people travel uh, there's there's a lot of different reasons to travel you could be going on vacation you could be going somewhere for work you could be going somewhere for a funeral so that's I, it you could be saying hello or goodbye and airports usually to me are a lot of hellos or goodbyes and if, if you're sitting next to someone and you're headed on vacation and they're headed to a funeral, your perception of the flight is going to be totally oh, different. Man, Andrew, when we say um, the most profound email, do you think that we're getting into the land of profundity here? I feel like we're saying some pretty obvious shit. Oh, we are saying some pretty <laughs> obvious shit, but... But it is not... It, you're it's, right. it's obvious it's, shit it's that you need a reminder like, about. You're absolutely right. Particularly relationships with our loved ones. I'm proud of you both for taking that moment to say, "Let's do this. Let's do something." Um, also, relationships take maintenance. They do take maintenance, and they take care and vigilance. And it's not. Some of us believe that relationships are hard, and we get that. And then we kind of put our head down, heads down, and we do as we think we were taught in some obligatory way and we go, okay, it's hard. It's hard. I'm going to muddle through, but that is different than vigilance and maintenance. And like you just said, it's as simple as checking in. Are we okay? Mm -hmm. What do you want here? What do you want? How are we doing? It's good. Proud of you guys. Proud of you kids. (laughs) Proud of you. So a while ago, we talked about tarot cards, and I play yeah. zero kind of uh, faith. I, I, I you think it's devil, trucking with the devil. Well, I know it's devil worship because my, my Catholic school mm-hmm. told me so. Mm-hmm. But I, I, um, I don't think that tarot cards or horoscopes have anything to offer. And I was thinking, why would I, why mm-hmm. would I feel so against tarot cards and horoscopes 
when I look at a love languages test and I care about it enough to discuss it here, you know, the results of it anyway. Science. Well, I was thinking about it and I was like, okay, so, so horoscopes are based on your birthday and you're going to tell me that everyone who was born in December, my birth month, uh, all acts the same way, not a chance, but all of these, all of these other little classifiers and you're taking and a test that's data collection. You, you you're taking a test data. and they're asking you how you are and then they're just telling you how you are. <laughs> right? What? So so a, a horoscope just makes sweeping generalizations oh. that apply to everybody. Yeah. And I'm I'm thinking that these love languages tests mm-hmm. don't right because essentially what they're doing is they're already asking you how you are. And then just telling you, you know, they're, they're, they're grouping. <laughs> That's interesting. They're asking you how you are. Could you just expound upon that a little? Yeah. When you, when you take the test, it says, I feel A, B, or C, uh-huh. right? <laughs> so instead of making a generalization based on your birthday, they're making a generalization based on the thing you literally just said to them. <laughs> right? It's a very dumb, simple thing that's going on here. <laughs> yeah. Why is that so funny? I don't know. I thought you, you okay? were going to say, <laughs> no, it's funny. because like, when you take those um, tests, it's so obvious the way that the data are collected. Do you know what I mean? They ask the same question sure. five different times to 50 different times, depending on the scope of the test. Right. So and I thought you were going to lean into how well I respect numbers and I respect spreadsheets. And basically that's an algorithm and a spreadsheet. And so it is more uh, reliable than a horoscope or a tarot card. It's all magic. And too much generalization. And that is what you're saying. But that's um, just a funny way to look at at it, that of course that's true, and that's true of every single self-help thing. The idea that we're just asking you how you are, and then we're telling you how you are. Yeah, we're, we're rephrasing it in a way, you know, we're, we're, we're taking your responses and putting them into buckets in a way that makes makes you say, whoa, I didn't think of it that way. Uh-huh. I know. And is that, are you mocking that, or are you appreciating that? I'm just commenting on it without yeah, taking a stance on it. Freaking golden mean. Because that's therapy. <laughs> Is it? Sure. Do we have any, uh, any, f- no. you haven't been to therapy since right. the last time we talked about therapy. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Feeling <laughs> that. Is your, is your, um, your new schedule? Is it taking a toll? Do you, do you wish that you had a therapy session in between your, your new once a month schedule? Yeah. But that's because it's actually gone longer than a month because of spring breaks and vacations and moving and stuff. No, uh, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, but it, well, I'm fine. It's fine, Andrew. I have a lot of things to discuss, but I'll make it work. Um, <laughs> in some ways, that's therapy. But then, and so then, some ways that feels like a um, like a, it's a bad thing, like a diminishing thing. Like, oh, you're just telling me how I was. On the other hand, isn't that literature and art and storytelling? That great recognition in a poem or a story or a movie when you go, oh, I never thought anybody else felt that way, Mm -hmm. right? That's the best part of any kind of entertainment when it speaks to your soul like that and makes you feel less alone. It speaks to your soul. It teases out what's already in your soul. Right. So isn't that the same as asking you how you are and then telling you how you are? I think so. It is. That's nice. So the truth is that... So I think I think for the love the, languages test, but it's just a different reason than I was. A, you took me on a different path than I thought you were taking me, and I found it kind of funny because it's so sweet. And the conclusion we came to is that the love languages test is a work of art, the same way that a painting is and a poem. Yeah, it just and you teases, don't teases hang those any insights of that right out of your, your soul. Wall. I you, don't want to hang it. I don't want to hang anything on my wall. Correct. You just last week we had a very interesting. In my mind, we'll see how people feel about it. Question about how much you want art in your life. And the answer was zero. If you took that on a test, you'd get a zero. Mm -hmm. So that means you don't like the love. You don't want the love language just test hanging on your wall. That's all that means. I certainly don't. (laughs) I certainly But it's useful and beautiful. And okay. Also because of your Buddhist ways, who knew when you crowned the May queen, um, the love languages test you it came into your life in a beautiful, artful way at a time that it meant something, and then you kind of yep, and then you moved on and forgot about it. Same with a painting. You do like art. You do like paintings. You do love museums. Mm-hmm. I do love museums. Do you feel emotional looking at art at a museum sometimes? Sometimes. Yeah. So you get all that, but you don't need to own it because the <sighs> passes like water through you. This experience called life, <laughs> right? Right, undisturbed. God, such the Buddha. All the rest of us are just hanging on to stuff. You know what I'm hanging on to? What are you hanging on to? I want to buy this one chair. 
One chair is it a little squatty chair for short people? No, it's a work of art chair that costs a lot of money. What kind of chair is it? Is it a chair for your living room? Yep. And how does it look? Beautiful, elegant, Frank about- Lloyd Wright ish. Is it? Is it kind of mid century modern? Yes, it's a beautiful chair. Is it a Frank Lloyd Wright design chair? No, I can't. No, I don't have. No, that's insane, Andrew. No, but it's a nice furniture designer, and it's on sale. It's a very expensive chair. I bought about the cheapest couch money can buy. I am regretting it because it does show every single stain. And you're only two weeks in. I'm two weeks in. But here's the thing. I know that those cushion covers come off, and you can wash them. So oh, I'm yeah. truly How's that fine. Go? What? Have you tried that yet? No, I'm, I have... Mm, I'm about to confess something that's going to horrify people. I have more inclination to, as I am trying to clean those cushion covers and scotch guard them and take care of them and realizing, oh my God, no human beings can be on this couch. I have more of an inclination to either, well, probably A, put a nice blanket down that looks like it's on purpose and it'll make me feel happier. And B, um, sort of mm, mm, paint slash die slash do something artistic on that couch that's going to make people mad. <laughs> you're not you're not above painting a chair. I believe some I'm of those chairs in your old house were painted. Sure not. And and I'm not talking about the frame. I'm talking about the upholstery. Yeah, the four-step <laughs> process of painting upholstery. And it was really fun. And actually, that painted chair is now in my little outdoor patio um, dining area, the painted silver chair. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so the couch is bumming me out, Apple keyboard style. But... Either way, I have a cheap-ass couch, and I can fix that, mitigate it. It's going to be cheap. It's fine. Then I have a little bit of room in my budget, aforementioned, to spend on a chair, but I'm still not sure. It's a lot of money on a chair. It's a beautiful leather chair. Ooh, I like a leather chair. Mm. The truth is I don't think people are ever going to sit in my living room. I think all of the activity and living in this house is going to be in the yard and the screened-in patio and right here in the— Studio area, huh? Speaking of living in the yard, yeah. we've had two 70-degree days in a row. Have you had a chance to go out and play with Clay yet? No, not yet? Okay, a chance, yes. Um, it occurred to me last Friday when I was on my last day of vacation, staycation, and the garage door was getting put in, and it was pretty darn sunny, and I thought nothing is preventing me from dragging that wheel out here and throwing in the sun. No, I have discipline. Except myself. the rumble of the hood. Yeah, no, not even that. No, it's that why I have a million other things to do. Over this past weekend, I also had a lot of closet organization and building shelves and then getting the shelves in the wrong place and getting them stuck in a closet and then having to undo <laughs> it and move it. I mean, it has been a scene, man. And the truth is, I'm still in such a state of everything constantly moving. We had fence built we had this and that what would i do with the beautiful pots that i threw they're gonna i mean pottery is a process you don't just throw one day and then you did something you gotta throw and then you let it dry and then you trim and then you let it dry and then you fire i mean it's not that's a fragile process and soon that those shelves in that garage will be ready to accept um fragile pots but not yet at all i'm far away from it but it feels close it's gonna be good it is going to be good. I can't wait for those hot summer days I know. when uh, when you're throwing pottery and I'm just basking in the sun. Do you see that flagstone patio out there? It is so cool for basking. <laughs> we have actual sand. I'm so good at basking. I could bask anywhere. You are good at basking. You it's my special talent. Nothing. I know. Clay Beach will be fun. I have an apology. Yeah, what's God, your apology? I hated that episode. Dear, like- dear Pop culture. Pop culture is truly about <laughs> That's what that. we should call the apology <laughs> section. Dear pop okay. culture. <laughs> Dear pop culture. It's exactly, that's exactly relevant because that, like two episodes ago, our bonus episode of, oh, I'm so embarrassed, by Manic Pixie Dream Girl Grows Up. I'm just, I was clearly, like I said, coming in hot about something. And I kept saying the whole time <laughs> that it was, it was mystery guided but boy it really was and you brought me around to it and actually it's been instructive because partly because of my cool neighbor who really is my mentor um and i think that manic pixie dream girl grows up just fine andrew but one of the things that i talked about is of who coined the term was i kept saying nathan rabin and then i learned like yesterday that it's i believe nathan rabin and i just felt stupider than ever 
Who, who I don't Nathan Rabin is the person who coined the term. Yeah. Okay. He's the writer. I just like well, it's known in places where people so talk funny. about that stuff and I didn't know it. I know you shouldn't judge somebody when they mispronounce a word because it means they've only read it. Right. And reading is good, Andrew. I know that. But I felt just stupider about that whole thing. I don't even know. First of all, Mr. <sighs> Mr. Rabin is the one who apologized to pop culture yep. first. Yep. There's there's something funny about him having to apologize and then you having to apologize to the apologizer I know, I know. for mispronouncing his oh, name. Oh, it's insane to have to apologize. But I felt but a little pop bit like... pop culture, we're sorry. I felt a little <laughs> bit like Dan Quayle spelling, misspelling potato. <laughs> That's how I feel a lot of the time when I listen to playback of this show. I feel like a giant idiot. Do you know that? I feel like a giant idiot when I listen to it. You do? I sure do. You're the wise one, though, for sure. Do you know how I compensate for it? Uh-uh. By not listening. I know. <laughs> and that's fine and good, and that's how it should be. I'm not quite there yet. Oh, but I did, as I started this episode, I believe, by saying I recorded a voiceover job here. Did I talk about that? You sure did. On this microphone or just to you? I think you said it on in this microphone in this show. Or in pretend. Did I talk about how Jonah's mixing? Hold on. Let me go grab another beer. Okay. I do want to tell you about some... I told you about that chair that I want and I'm kind of drooling over and... Yes, ma'am. ...considering. So we found that chair. A friend of mine and I went out on the weekend and explored my neighborhood. And then a couple of other friends and I did the same. And I've just been exploring up and down the neighborhood, eating some amazing food. I got a chicken house right near me, Andrew. We went to a (laughs) weird market that in the summer, and I've seen it in my life has plants. It's like a nursery. You can buy your tomato seedlings there and you can buy house plants and outdoor plants. And so we wanted to, we wondered what's going on there. It seems to be open now in the middle of, well, it's technically spring, but feels kind of wintry. So this place in Denver, Colorado specializes in freshly caught, never frozen salmon. Wait, where's this? In my neighborhood, OPSEC. I want to know. I know. That's weird. So I meet the guy there. I suppose I'm going to call him my fishmonger from now on because I bought a slice of salmon. Um, And he lives in my neighborhood. Like, I'm close to my neighborhood where we're exploring, but a few blocks away. Anyway, this guy lives, like, two blocks away. And I was like, that's cool. I'm meeting my neighbors. We went to a bunch of antique stores. Mm -hmm. We went to the mid-century modern furniture store, which is where I'm drooling about this chair. And at this antique store, they're just these cool, and, like, they sort of tend toward the weird um, stores in my neighborhood and there are a couple of women there who clearly work there and I was just kind of going gosh I want them to be my friends mm-hmm. and now I think they are my friends wow yeah, I know you're really and out and about in the hood I'm out and about in the hood and then uh, and then when I was checking out at that particular junk store antique store um, I was talking <laughs> about new, moving into the neighborhood dee, 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 and a guy who was checking me out knows a guy checking who lives... you out like uh, no, like, no, 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 like no. going through the point taking, of sale system mm-hmm, yep at okay. the till, point of sale. A man who was making a transaction with a me. cashier, mm-hmm. if you will. Yeah, kind of like your fishmonger, yep. but but with uh, exchanging money in exchanging front of a, a Nancy computerized Sinatra album device for tracking inventory yes. and purchases. But I was buying a Nancy Sinatra album, and I was paying for it. I'm saying it in my wallet now. It's awesome. He knows a man who lives on my actual block. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now he knows a lady who lives uh-huh. on your actual and block. Now I'm going to know that guy. And, <laughs> and he's an old guy who also is in the, as my next door neighbor lady put it, the junk business. Because um, anyway, it's so cool that I really, really, fa- and, and I wasn't sure that he really lived on my block. And I came home and talked to my neighbor friend, my mentor, grown up manic pixie dream girl neighbor. And she confirmed that this guy does live on our block and that yes, he is a junk dealer as she put it. And I (laughs) honestly feel like I'm part of a, a neighborhood. So I want to rehash the characters. We've got the fishmonger. Mm -hmm. We've got the manic pixie dream girl. Mm -hmm. Also known as Rafiki because she is your mentor. Yeah, she's Rafiki. We could just call her that. And we've got the junk guy. (laughs) We've got junk guy. (laughs) I do have a new furnace. It did indeed take, Andrew, three hours of jackhammering. 
Wow. It wasn't shaving off an inch, as it turned out. I have been on my hands and knees in my crawl space. Yeah? Love it. I'm, uh, how, how is it down there? Is it, is it gross? Are no. there, or is there a rabbit, a rabbit's warren? Is that what rabbits live in? Do they oh, live in a warren? Yeah, they probably do. That's cute. And to no. any listeners named Warren, uh-huh. we're sorry that you have to share your life with rabbits. <laughs> it's weird. Dear pop no, culture. I, no, and I've asked about that, like, don't mammals and vermin go down there and hide? And, and everybody has said no. I've, I don't think I've ever been a crawl space in my life. No, they don't because there's nothing down there. Okay. Um, no, there are spidery spider webs, but um, no, it seems actually remarkably clean. I mean, it's dirt, but it's clean dirt mm-hmm. and dry. And I learned that I have to go down there in one month and then every three months during the winter to replace my um, filter in my furnace. I think that's a common maintenance thing that a lot Jeez. of people don't do. Okay, yeah, I didn't even know about it. They loaned me, the guys who are here, their killer knee pads that they use. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to get a pair of those if I'm going down there every three months. <laughs> Seems Anyway, it was kind of cool to see my crawl space. Did they, so they, they did a lot of jackhammering to get the furnace in. Did they re-cement the hole or did they just yeah. leave it open? It's open. Is it a nice clean cut so yeah, that it uh, doesn't look bad oh yeah it goes all, what they mm, yep it's fine it goes all the way down to the dirt he took out the bottom sort of slab of the window well basically hmm. it's a little scary um i'm sure it's fine andrew um yeah, can can we workshop a joke together yeah, right yeah. now live on air yeah so i have a friend yeah, it better not be about poop or dicks of course not okay i would never i have a friend who just adopted a dog and in the Denver area, we have a large, it's probably the biggest shelter around here called the Dumb Friends League. Mm, there's a joke there for sure. There is a joke there. I know. I've known that for 25 years. And this friend that I have, they like to travel quite a bit. Uh-huh. And if they're going to adopt a dog, that means that one of their friends is going to have to take <laughs> care of this dog often because That's they travel so much. Friend. And it turns out that the Dumb Friends of the Dumb Friends League are not actually the animals. Yeah. They're the people that the animals get foisted on. Boom. Somewhere, that's your joke. Somewhere in there is a hilarious You joke. just kind of laid it out perfectly. You actually, that's a perfect joke. Turns out the dumb friends are not the dumb friends. Like it's the friends of the people who agreed it out. That's a perfect joke, except that the name itself, Dumb Friends League, is that ubiquitous? I, is that an only a Denver thing? I have no idea. If more people in the world, first of all, that joke would kill at Comedy Works. I'm never going to tell that joke, so you can have it. If you want to do an open mic night, you should do that joke. That's a good joke. All right. Perfect I've, structure. You I've got it. 15 seconds in a two-minute yep. set. <laughs> yep. All right. Yep. That's my time. Se- seven more. <laughs> seven more of those, and I've got it. Okay, everybody. That, no, that's a good joke. I think you uh, walked it through perfectly. You um, did the exposition part. We could kind of see it coming. I mean, I could because that has always bothered me. And that is the dumbest name for a shelter. It, I right. Dumb should not be in any any name of any enterprise. And it means that they can't speak, mm-hmm. which they can. Um, I got nothing. That's certainly long enough. I got nothing. I think. Well, the the part of this show that will never air and will never be heard by anyone else. There was no ruckus, I but know. towards the end, I think the ruckus showed itself. Ruckus-y. Well, it builds. That's how things are in life. That's right. You get people, better with age. The people who uh, who turn off our show at uh, minute ten, they are so misguided. They're they're the fools. They really <laughs> not not like you, sweet listener, who's still listening now. Yeah, really. Thanks everybody for hanging in there. And remember, you too could earn a mug. We have two mugs. Most profound. Best sponsors. Bring it. That's right. All right. Bye, Andrew. Goodbye, Mrs. Philholm. 